Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we have a manga review of the final chapter for 2017, An Unknown Mama. And hopping straight into it, we pick up from right where we left off two weeks ago with Carrot wrecking some ships in her Sulong form. And I think we finally settled on Sulong being the official name of her transformation. During my review of chapter 888, I was going to go with Ceylon, um, C-E-Y-L-O-N, because I think it just sounds cooler, but hey, what can you do? But through the power of the ever-knowledgeable Jimbe, we also have some more information about the specifics of the Sulong form. It's essentially what we thought, a sort of feral instinct that manifests itself and turns the minks into their purest animal forms. However, it does come with a slight catch, and that is that if they are unable to suppress themselves within the night, they can die of exhaustion. So that's a pretty rough condition, but from a storytelling standpoint, I'm really glad that there is a consequence to this seemingly super powerful transformation. I really hate when characters just receive power-ups. That's why I'm such a fan of Luffy using gears. He can't just go ahead and use them casually because they reduce his lifespan. And just on that, Brook also mentions that the Sulong transformation is reducing Carrot's lifespan as well, at least according to his understanding. Although I don't think this will ever be an issue for Carrot, but it is an interesting thing to note for certain other minks who will be involved in future arcs. Specifically, Nekomamushi and Inuarashi. Inuarashi has already stated that he plans on showing the full power of the Minx the next time he encounters Jack. So I don't think it would be entirely out of the realm of possibility for one or both Mink leaders to die from exhaustion in their Sulong forms during the Wano arc. It's a sad idea to think about because I love both of these characters, but there has to be a reason why the specific condition of death was flagged right here. In any case, realizing the carrot has a limit, Brooke decides to help, and like the terrible One Piece fan I am, I'd completely forgotten that he can scuttle across water. And in doing so, he continues to be one of the most valuable players of the entire Whole Cake Island arc, by making a whole ship full of Big Mom pirates fall asleep, as well as essentially saving Carrot and returning her to the Sunny. Going into 2017, this was supposed to be the year of Sanji, but Brooke keeps jumping into the fray and just being awesome. And the sad thing is that before this year, he was probably my least favorite straw hat, actually. But after 2017, I probably need to reassess my rankings. And of course, we need to talk about the beast that is Big Mom. As mentioned last time, we've now entered a stage of quote-unquote starvation that not even her first son has experienced. So a couple of people mentioned during the chapter that she's acting strange, but some miscellaneous Big Mom pirate said something quite interesting in that she looks like an entirely different person. And it might just be because she's lost a lot of weight, but she really does, especially in terms of her face. She's always kind of looked like a crazed powerhouse, but here, she looks downright demonic. And also in that last panel, Prometheus appears to have become her hair with his evil face on. And it makes me wonder about something that I thought during the flashback, which is whether or not there's something else going on with Charlotte Lin Lin. What I mean by that is that I don't think Charlotte Lin Lin is necessarily an evil person. Yeah, lately she's on the bad side of things, being a big scary Yonko and all, but I put that mainly down to Strusen's influence over her during her formative years. The child Charlotte Lin Lin was a very sweet girl who pretty much just wanted to live in peace with everyone and, um, well, eat everything. And the last time she was seen in this sort of form probably would have been during her flashback when one of the giants actually called her a demon. And looking back on that moment, which was the end of chapter 866, her eyes are profoundly different. Now I know that demons aren't really a thing in One Piece, but I just don't think the big mom who landed on the sunny during this chapter was Charlotte Lin Lin. Either she has a split personality or somehow there is another presence inside her that only seems to activate in response to food, or more accurately, the lack thereof. And this seems to be reflected in her direct homies as well. Zeus, Prometheus, and Napoleon were all born of Big Mom's soul. And all of them have a very happy-go-lucky demeanor, but when they get serious, they also look downright demonic. So essentially, I have no proof, but I think there's more to Big Mom that we are yet to discover. Moving on with the events of this chapter, Sanji had a really nice moment where he refused Capone's suggestion of poisoning the cake about to be fed to Big Mom. It kind of brings Sanji full circle to the moment where we first met him at Baratier. One of his very first actions in the series was to feed the starving Gin, and Sanji didn't know at this point that he was about to become an enemy, but I don't think that would have changed his actions. And this chapter confirms that. Sanji is going to go ahead and feed the greatest enemy the Straw Hats have ever encountered, simply because she wants to eat. And feeding those who want to eat is a cook's job. 
Honestly, this moment almost makes the whole baking a cake plot worth it. And the other moment that almost makes it worth it is when Sanji force feeds Capone and he just falls over in pure delight. Capone's look of shock when being fed is priceless, I love it. And I also quite like that stronger and stronger people are being knocked out by the power of a mere taste of this cake. If one tiny spoon can do this to someone like Capone, then yeah, I've got no problem believing that the entire cake can subdue Big Mom. As usual, the only thing that ruins this is Pudding. She's been a very one note character ever since the cake baking started and every time Sanji does something even remotely cool, she just finds herself falling over Lovestruck. It's ridiculous to imagine that this time last year, I was so excited that against all One Piece odds, Pudding was evil. And in terms of her character in 2017, she's done a complete 180 and lost a lot of intrigue actually. It's been a very depressing journey for Pudding from fascinating villain to stock female pointless character. But let's move on from that and talk about the end of the chapter, which I touched on before, but damn, that's a bit of a cliffhanger. Big Mom has landed on the Thousand Sunny, and with very little choice, Jinbei prepares everyone to abandon ship. Firstly, I love Jinbei taking on the role of captain in Luffy's absence. He feels like a very natural leader, and even though you can see the terror in his eyes, he's quite calm about having one of the four emperors casually right in front of him. But this really doesn't bode well for the Sunny, does it? Given Big Mom's track record, she could tear the ship apart in seconds. And unless that cake arrives in pretty much the first panel of the next chapter, I feel like she might do just that. Luckily though, there are some other pieces at play here should the Sunny become compromised. It's entirely possible that the German Kingdom sweep in to save the day and somehow tow the Sunny out of Totland when this is all over. It's also possible that the Fire Tank Pirates might have a moment of generosity there as well, or even Aladdin's pirate crew. Come to think of it, Jinbei himself might be able to pull the Sunny out of Totland just like he did when he took it through the tidal wave a few chapters back. And then when the crew finally reunites, I can see Frankie getting incredibly angry about wrecking his work but also taking this as an opportunity to perhaps make some upgrades. In any case, this is still a pretty bad situation for all involved, and I'm sorry to say that we'll have to wait until next year to know the outcome. And I'm also very sorry to say that that about does it for chapter 889, as well as for the One Piece manga in 2017. But don't despair, instead of a chapter review next week, I'll be doing a special video looking back on the top 10 moments of 2017. It's been a pretty fantastic year actually, and I'm very much looking forward to going through all of the amazingness it's given us. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe, and please do comment with your thoughts on the final chapter of this year. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.